what I'm going to show you in the next few minutes is how a single change in the architecture of artificial intelligence may have just retired the technology we have been using for 10 years and unlocked a new level of intelligence. I know you must be tired of hearing this is the new revolution every week. I would be skeptical too because it sounds like an exaggeration. But the company DeepSeek has just published a study proving that there is a bottleneck that no one was seeing and they have resolved it now, forced by the need to innovate without the best ships on the market. I dove into the technical details and the complex mathematics of this document to explain to you in a simple and direct way why this discovery truly changes the game and how it affects the future of technology. Before I show you the mathematical proof, comment down below your current feeling. Do you think that artificial intelligences like ChatGPT have stagnated and hit a ceiling? Or do you believe that there is still a hidden trick that no one has seen? I want to know if you are on the team of skeptics or optimists before seeing what I discovered. Thank you for the comment. Now let's get to the facts. Let's go back a little bit so you understand what is happening. That old design, which experts call residual connections, was not wrong. On the contrary, it was super necessary. Without it, modern artificial intelligence, like these chat robots we use, would not even exist. But all this safety came with a price. To keep the models functioning without freezing and not letting them break while they learn, we significantly limited the amount of information they can move inside their head. To understand the size of the thing that DeepSeek did, we need to look at a basic problem that appears when we try to increase the size of these uh, artificial intelligences. Imagine that these large language models are like giant lasagnas made of various layers. A command of yours enters the first layer, it processes a little bit, passes to the next and so on until the last layer releases the answer. During training, if the answer comes out wrong, the system sends an error signal back. Imagine a teacher correcting a test that travels the entire path in reverse, telling each layer what it needs to fix. The problem is that years ago, researchers noticed that forcing this correction signal to pass through each layer one by one was a disaster. The signal either disappeared halfway, like in a game of telephone, or became too exaggerated, making learning impossible. The solution was to create the so-called residual connections. Think of them as a shortcut or an express tunnel that allows information to skip the heavy traffic of the layers. This saved deep learning. Before that, training very large networks was something super fragile. You placed many layers and after a certain point, the system became dumber instead of smarter. These shortcuts resolved this and made training reliable. The success was so great that um, the industry stopped questioning this method. It became basic infrastructure like water plumbing or electrical wiring in your house. You just assume it is there and it works. Everyone went to focus on other things. How to make artificial intelligence pay more attention, give it more data to read, increase the numbers. But the internal flow of information, the hydraulics of the thing remained untouched. The trade-off we made back then was discrete. We gained stability, meaning the system did not break, but we lost flexibility. The information passed cleanly, but it was forced to pass through a very narrow path. While the models were smaller, it was fine. But as we advanced to difficult reasoning tasks, this narrow path became a silent traffic jam. That was when researchers started asking themselves, what if instead of a single stream of information in these shortcuts, we pass several streams at the same time? The idea is to have more internal communication, like widening a single lane dirt road to a giant 10 lane highway. This earned a fancy name, hyperconnections. On paper, it is beautiful. The model gains a gigantic internal workspace to think about various things at the same time. But in practice, the result was a mess. When you open all these lanes without control, the signals start crashing into each other. Training starts well, but as the model gets bigger, the signals increase too much layer after layer. Suddenly the errors skyrocket and the model collapses, meaning it stops working. Imagine spending millions of dollars on a training run that out of nowhere becomes useless. It is a risk that giant companies like Google or OpenAI do not want to take that is why this idea of widening the lanes never became standard. 
It is exactly here that DeepSeek's genius move comes in. Their idea is not to give up on the various lanes, but to place a strict traffic guard. They introduce what they call manifold constraint hyperconnections, or the acronym MHC. The name is complicated, but the concept is elegant. You allow the streams to exchange information with each other, but impose a firm mathematical rule where the total strength of the signal must remain constant. They do this by forcing the mathematical tables that mix this data to follow a rule where everything must sum to exactly one. In practice, this means that the information can be redistributed, mixed and improved, but never increase to the point of exploding the system's ears, nor diminish to the point of disappearing. They use advanced geometry calculations to ensure that no matter how deep the network is, the result remains stable. It is stability guaranteed by mathematics, not by luck. With this resolved, widening the data flow stops being dangerous and becomes a huge advantage. And we are not just talking about theory. They tested this in real life. They train models with 3 billion, 9 billion, and 27 billion parameters with this new architecture and compare them with the old standard. The new models won in everything. The performance improvements were brutal, especially in logical and mathematical reasoning. In a test called Grade School Math 8000, focused on mathematics, the 27 billion parameter model jumped from a score of 46.7 to 53.8. In general knowledge tests, it rose from 59 to 63.4. It might seem little to those looking from the outside, but at this scale, these gains are difficult to achieve just by adding more data. What they did was give the model more internal brain to process information, a totally new way to grow. Now, there is a side we need to talk about, which is engineering, the part of building the machine. Widening the streams means moving much more data through the computer's memory. And today, in artificial intelligence, the problem is rarely the speed of doing the calculation, but rather the speed at which you can move data from memory to the processor, the famous memory wall. If you are not careful, training becomes slow and expensive. The DeepSeek team did not stop just at mathematics. They rewrote fundamental parts of the computer program that does the training. They created custom processing kernels for video cards that join tasks together. Instead of the chip reading a piece of data, processing, saving, reading again, and processing something else. They make the chip perform various tasks at once with the same piece of data before returning it to memory. They also use the technique of recalculating things. Instead of storing every step of the calculation in memory, which takes up absurd space, they prefer to redo some calculations on the spot when they need them. This saves a lot of video memory on the cards. Added to this, they use a scheduling system that hides data transfer behind the processing time as if you were washing dishes while the food cooks to save time. The result? They managed to increase the width of the internal data flow by four times, but the total time to train increased by less than 6.7%. It is an absurd efficiency. We need to look at the global scenario here. DeepSeek is based in China. Because of commercial blockades from the United States, they have limited access to the most powerful chips in the world. This forces them to be much more creative with software and architecture than American laboratories, which can simply buy more powerful machines. This innovation is born from necessity. This leads us to the strategic impact. They published all of this openly for everyone to see. They did not hide the game. Market analysts see this as a demonstration of confidence and strength from the Chinese technology world. By sharing the base, they show that their advantage is not a secret kept under lock and key, but rather the capacity to do things fast. This also places pressure on the West. It is likely that we will see famous laboratories testing similar architectures soon. Once an idea like this proves possible, it spreads. Although the article does not explicitly mention their next model, it is very likely that these innovations will be the backbone of the next intelligent robots they will launch. From a technical point of view, this new technique resolves two problems at once. It restores stability in wide networks and does it efficiently enough to be financially worth it. The charts in the article show the dramatic difference between an old model failing after 12,000 training steps 
and the new model going strong. The big reflection that remains is if changing the way information flows inside generates greater gains than just stacking more layers, what else do we assume is solved in artificial intelligence, but which in reality can be totally reinvented? Now that Pandora's box has been opened, cast your bet in the comments. Do you think creativity and engineering will defeat the brute force of trillion dollar chips? Or will the American giants simply copy this and crush the competition? What is worth more going forward, brains or money? It is a fascinating shift in thinking. I am curious to see how far this architecture will take us in the coming months.